neglected bucket handle, medial meniscus tears, are they worth repairing? So we know that bucket handle tears have different patterns from this paper in JBGS 1983. It is a large longitudinal tear that can displace into the notch and cause recurrent uh, pain, swelling, and locking. Now, what is uh, neglected is at least three months from injury. The longest bucket handle that I've prepared is about three years old or 36 months in the literature. There have been reports of bucket handle tears repaired up to 96 months. So why should we repair bucket handle tears? We know that the resection of a bucket handle tear in the concurrent ACL reconstruction leads to increased big contact pressures in both the medial as well as the lateral compartments, as well as meniscal defects can affect the kinematics of the deficient in an ACL deficient knee in terms of translation and rotational stability. So we should repair these tears to protect the cartilage and the knee joint. Now in large tears, it also affects the outcomes of our ACL reconstruction. Chronic ACL tears, um, ligamentous laxity and meniscus tears are associated with high-grade knee laxity, high-grade pivot shift and anterior drawer, and high-grade pivot shift preoperatively detected is predictive of increased odds of provision ACL surgery shown by the Moon Group as such to repair the meniscus and to reconstruct the ACL needs to happen in hand in hand to protect the ACL reconstruction. We all are aware of the various techniques of repairing the meniscus using outside in, inside out, all inside devices, as well as a combination of using these techniques to accomplish an effective meniscal repair. This is a 15-year-old female volleyball player having a bad landing during a game. It is four months old, and these are her MRIs. You will see a displaced bucket handle seen in the axial, as well as the sagittal cuts, a double PCL sign, as well as a displaced fragment in the notch. So this is her arthroscopic pictures. You can see the scarring of the fragment in, in the surrounding tissue. In a lot of these cases, after two to three months, it is difficult to reduce the fragment as we can see in this video. A medial pie crust is often required to open up the medial compartment. As we can see, after doing the medial pie crusting, the medial compartment opens up a lot easier for the reduction of this medial meniscal fragment. So this would be the first step in a um, chronic or neglected bucket handle of at least more than three months. After reduction, it will be important to prepare the referees of the municipal surfaces with rasping as well as to uh, traffinate to improve the vascularity and improve the healing um, rates of these repairs. And then I usually use a minimum of six stitches and I use a combination of hybrid technique these are the use of all inside devices. You have seen me use three sti vertical stitches in the body and junction to repair the meniscus. And, 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 and this is a under surface stitch in a horizontal fashion to secure it to the back of the capsule. After this, you then check the stability of the meniscus. Let's say I usually place at least six stitches and if you feel there's a need to do not hesitate to use more fixation to improve, improve your repair and so that's a horizontal stitch placed in the junction of the meniscus and so after, after this you can see that the repair is fairly accomplished in the posterior part and the body up to the mid body of the meniscus with at least six to seven all inside stitches. To reach the more anterior part from the mid body anteriorly, I would advocate the use of inside out stitches as you can see. So you can see there's still a gap and then placing inside out stitches, this is an inside out cannula and placing the sutures to supplement the repair. 
So in this case, I think I've got a total of eight to nine sutures to accomplish effective pair. And then we proceeded on to do the ACL reconstruction as we see in the picture. The other tip that I can share in a chronic situation is the use of inside out reduction switches. So you see the rasping of the meniscus after a medial release and the reduction is achieved and using inside out reduction switches, we then can hold the fragment preventing it from re-displacing. And subsequently then we can start the repair in the posterior horn using an inside out device. Um, you can choose whichever inside out device that you, you, uh, you like. And with that reduction stage help in place, this would then accomplish the repair uh, in the posterior horn without the meniscus redisplacing. In a neglected bucket handle tear, there's usually scarring first in the anterior interval, as you can see. So it re what is required is to release some of this scar tissue that we can see using either a vaporizer or a shaver. This is scarring just anterior, so the ACL remnant. And there's usually also scarring in the lateral, sorry, in the medial gutter. So you can see, use, again, using a vaporizer, you clear some of this scar tissue that limits the reduction. So besides rasping and shaving some of this scar tissue, I use a vaporizer in the chron more chronic neglected back handles to clear some of these scar tissue that we can see. And these scar tissue sometimes prevents the proper reduction of the meniscal fragment prior to put, putting your repair stitches. Okay, so you can see the use of a vaporizer as well as a shaver to then clear this scar tissue before we proceed on to do the meniscal repair as we can see. I also use the skid as an adjunct to reduce the displaced fragment prior to putting my all inside devices. So we can see we have repeated the post-operative MRIs. The top ones show the pre-operative displaced bucket handles in the sagittal, so I left the coronal cuts in about 24 months. Even tears that are up to one, two, three years have been repaired successfully using the techniques that I've talked about. In some cases, some of these displaced tears are associated with large uh, osteochondral injuries, as in this case. And you can see that it's an osteochondral fragment. And the displaced uh, bucket handle tear has to be sort of uh, reduced to allow us to see some of these uh, chondral injuries a bit clearer. So again, using a combination of hybrid sutures, we actually reduce the displaced fragment and then repair the meniscus using inside out, all inside devices. And you can see using a flexible type of um, all inside device to, that allows us to reach in the junction. This is a device that's going into the posterior horn, as well as inside out um, sutures, as we can see the inside out cannula. And then this is a flexible all inside device. So this gives us uh, effective repairs and, and then reducing the meniscal fragment prior to doing a mini open to do the repair of this uh, significant osteochondral fragment. So I would like to share the tips for a bucket handle tear. I use a spotted cannula. I place stitches in um, when, when, when it's unstable, one stitch in the capsule. I place the stitches in the regions with the best tissue. I usually place a stitch in the corner, right at the corner. This helps to prevent tear extension. I use a combination of vertical and horizontal stitches. I said I use at least more than six stitches for bucket handle tears. You also need to be aware of the depth limiter that we set to allow for safe introduction of these implants so that the implants can be deployed and they do not cause a risk to the neurovascular structures. We have published these uh, techniques in arthroscopic techniques. And we have also looked at the use of 
all inside devices uh, in relation to the type, to the location of the portal uh, and, and how safe it is to be, to be used. You know? So this is published in our Troscopy in 2020. So try not to repair the posterior horn or the lateral meniscus with the device coming from the lateral portal because that brings the device closest to the neurovascular bundles posteriorly. So what are the results of buckhandle tear? So Sanghua has reported a healing rate of 82% on second atroscopy. Well, Abuzoni had a systematic review where he said that bucket handle tears had a failure rate of 29%. Now, these are based on many studies that use older generation repair devices and have niche methods of reporting. This is long-term results, mean age of 22 years, mean follow-up of 14 months, minimum of five years, where they reported a failure rate of about 33%. This is from Michael Hunter's group. Well, it is important to understand that successful repairs and higher CUS and IKDC scores and the medial meniscus has a 4.5 times higher chance of failure compared to the lateral. So what are the results of neglected bucket handle tests? Two studies, one from Turkey and another from Spain, report a clinical healing rate of approximately 80%. And these are chronic neglected bucket handles. And for the other study, the time from injury to surgery was an average of 10 months. So these tests do heal to a success rate of 80%. What are our results? We looked at 20 patients, 21 bucket handle tests with a five year follow up, where we report about a 90% success rate at five years based on second look MRI. So again, try to repair some of these large tests, even though they are neglected because they protect the ACL, they protect the cartilage, and they give fairly good outcomes. So in summary, repair bucket handles to protect the ACL and cartilage, use sufficient stitches, six or more, incorporate hybrid repair techniques, use inside out sutures, clear scar tissue, chronic tears, and the results of bucket handles are usually over 80% successful. So thank you very much once again for inviting me to we can meet again. Hope we can either travel to Singapore and I can travel to India soon. Stay safe and healthy everyone.